In Elden Ring, Gold Mask's ending is one of the most divisive and enigmatic, with some arguing it's the best ending and others arguing it's the worst one. In this episode of Fear the Old Lore, we'll examine Gold Mask, his ending, and the holism of the Golden Order comparing the English and Japanese versions of the game for more insight into the lore. Before beginning, I'd like to shout out Garrulous Gold Mask and their video on Gold Mask's ending being the best ending in Elden Ring, which I reacted to on stream in the live section of my channel. Even though I have my disagreements, it helped me organize some of my thoughts on the topic, which ultimately led to the creation of this video. I've gone ahead and linked Garrulous Gold Mask's video and my reaction to it in the video description. Alright, now let's dive in. The Mending Rune of Perfect Order says it's a rune of transcendental ideology which will attempt to perfect the Golden Order, and that the current imperfection of the Golden Order, or instability of ideology, can be blamed upon the fickleness of the gods no better than men. That is the fly in the ointment. Although it seems pretty straightforward at first glance, there's a lot to unpack in this description. Although Corin says that Goldmask doubts the holism of the Golden Order, I think this is a half-truth. I'd argue that Goldmask does think that the Golden Order itself is perfect, and that the issue with it is its subordination to gods whose hearts are just as fickle as men's. In other words, the Golden Order is perfect and whole, but the issue in Goldmask's mind is that Merica would turn it back on the Order and shatter the Elden Ring. This can be inferred from the description of Order Healing, which says, the noble gold mask lamented what had become of the hunters. How easy it is for learning and learnedness to be reduced to the ravings of fanatics. All the good and the great wanted in their foolishness was an absolute evil to contend with. Does such a notion exist within the fundamentals of order? What this implies to me is that since golden order fundamentalist hunters are portrayed as dogmatic zealots, they fail to adhere to the so-called fundamentals of the golden order by failing to understand that those who live in death are part of the golden order, and if they exist within the order, then they cannot be the absolute evil they're looking for. But this leads to its own set of problems. If those who live in death exist within the golden order, what exactly does that mean, and why do the hunters hunt them? As I so often reference on this channel, Roderica says that an immortal essence exists as spirit under the Golden Order, and in his Japanese dialogue, Roger says the reason those who live in death touched upon a flaw within the Golden Order is due to their fervent desire to live again. With the Rune of Death removed from the lands between, destined death is effectively removed as well, and those who die seem to die only in body and not spirit due to spirits being immortal essence in the Golden Order. Thus, those who live in death have always existed within the Golden Order, but Merica and the Golden Order fundamentalists were unaware of their plight until they were infected by Deathroot and anchored physically back into the land. So although those who live in death are a byproduct of the Golden Order, Merica and her followers rejected them because the Golden Order has no mercy for those who trespass beyond life's bounds. The Golden Order was created upon the removal of destined death after all. We don't know why exactly she did it, but it's likely the reason Merica shattered the Elden Ring is because once Godwin was assassinated, Deathroot began sprouting from his corpse throughout the land, and those who live in death soon followed. Because the immortal spiritual essence of those who live in death were reanimated by Deathroot, this may have revealed to Merica that the Golden Order could still function without the Erd Tree, and so she turned her back on it because it wasn't the order she envisioned. It was Radigan's, and he was not a god. She was. O oh, Radigan, leal hound of the Golden Order, thou art yet to become me. Thou art yet to become a god. Let us be shattered, both mine other self. Merica turned her back on the Golden Order and shattered the Elden Ring. And it is this conceit which Goldmask would reject. To him, the Golden Order is perfect, but this is ironically at odds with the adherents of the Golden Order fundamentalism who believe Merica to be the one true god of the Order. While the Golden Order is perfect, its creator is not, and thus Goldmask seeks to wrestle control of the Order away from the gods so that its perfection and holism can never be doubted again. Because of the way the Elden Ring governs the metaphysical laws of the universe, it's unclear if Goldmask merely intends to make the Elden Ring unbreakable so that it can never be shattered again, 
or if he intends to make it eternal so that it can never be mended again, or if by mending the rune, Gold Mask would be forcibly stripping others of their free will to discriminate against those who live in death, or their desire to alter the order further. I tend to think Gold Mask's goal is to make the Elden Ring unable to be tampered with again, so that way the Golden Order could exist in perpetuity. But this raises many questions. Would Gold Mask's order do anything about Deathroot, or would it incorporate those who live in death within it, or remove them entirely? Would people's spirits exist forever as a mortal essence, or would they need to be reborn through the Erd Tree? Would the beings fated to never die in Gold Mask's world lose their minds over time like the nobles we see wandering the lands between? Or is their loss of memory a byproduct of the Shattering? In some ways, I like to compare the Elden Ring to a code that can be used to run a program. Now just because the code is perfect and that it can be executed successfully, does that necessarily make it a good code? Arguably no, and Gold Mask's code would turn the bugs of its program into permanent features with no more firmware upgrades to support it. So in a sense, I think Gold Mask is technically right in saying the issue with the Golden Order is that its god or developers abandon it, but I'm not sure Gold Mask has the vision or wherewithal to question the merits of the tenets of the Golden Order, since he himself is a fundamentalist of it. So is Gold Mask's Age of Order the best ending? It seems to offer more stability than the other endings. Or is it the worst, with its stability merely being a form of rigidity that would deprive others of their ability to alter it in the future? I'm curious as to hear your thoughts in the comment section, and hopefully this video has provided some extra food for thought as well. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to talk more lore, feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'd also like to thank all my patrons and channel members for your continued support. I appreciate it. You can become one for as little as $1 a month and be granted permanent access to the secret Discord channel where you can see pictures of what's been described as the world's blurriest dog, or early access to my scripts and videos. Catch you next time. And remember, fear the old lore.